So for that, one of the key attributes is uh, around the intelligent route optimization. We need to basically forecast and predict various learnings that you've had from previous delivery boards. Then we also have autonomous warehouse and yard operations, which are using a lot of robots and a lot of uh, automated systems, you know, for container sorting, stacking, and cargo movement across warehouses and port yards. So that, and then private 5G adoption has been a key enabler for a lot of ports and logistics and even airports for that particular. Because what private 5G does are three main key things. One, it brings enhanced throughputs. It brings in low latency, which is very critical with edge, com edge computing coming into play as well. And the third one is multitude of devices that you can connect with the private 5G. Now, the fields that I would uh, really suggest uh, people to upscale in is obviously going to be the data science aspect of things okay because what we are doing is um, you know a lot of data a big data that we need to number crunch and bring the analytics out of it so that's one digital twin um, in the ports operation is also a very very hot space computer vision um, as we have also quite a lot of focus within the organization, this is also solving majority of your AI use cases. And then I would say uh, project management. Hello, supply chain friends to another podcast on my channel. And as you have recently noted, I am posting a lot of content around AI in supply chain, simply because AI is finally moving away from just being a buzzword. And we can now see increasing number of examples of how it's affecting all areas of our supply chain uh, score model. So we saw some examples in my previous videos on how it's being implemented in the sourcing side and the planning side. Uh, I also invited Aileen Sandoval to my podcast where she talked about how it's overall affecting the overarching architecture within the supply chain technology space. And today we are going to talk about another very interesting dimension of AI and supply chain, which is how it is being implemented in the world of ports and shipping. And to talk about that, I've got a perfect guest who has a lot of experience in implementing such solutions in the Middle East, in the ports and shipping industry. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Ehab Barki on my podcast. Hello, Ehab. Welcome back to my podcast, I must say. Yes, Jamil. Thank you so much. And uh, this is an equally important topic from a previous podcast. I believe ports and logistics obviously are a heartbeat of global commerce. And obviously, AI is disrupting this space uh, quite extensively. So tell us a little bit about your journey, Ahab, and uh, tell us a little bit about XLoop. Yes, Jamil. So I have actually joined XLoop Digital Middle East as, uh, and I'm leading the operations here in Qatar and expanding into the Middle East. And uh, I'd like to get into why Qatar is because obviously it's a very niche market. They're really focusing on digital transformation and AI related solution as well as Saudi and UAE, but they're very saturated markets this is a very niche market to expand from so we started off our operations from Qatar itself uh, we are uh, you know uh, we really focus on AI powered digital transformation solutions into critical industries like smart cities telecom banking and obviously the topic of today which is logistics and ports excellent and uh, before we dive into ports and shipping, uh, just from out of my own curiosity, I want to ask this, which industries you're seeing the most traction in terms of AI adoption? Uh, if you want, want to just shed some light on that. Well, I would say if we have to list down top three, it has to be smart cities, uh, which is also a very hot topic within uh, the global uh, space of things, transport industry, and again, logistics. So these are the three key industries where AI is really disrupting the market right now. Excellent. Great. So I think that's a great segue to get into my favorite topic, which is logistics and supply chain. So tell us a little bit about how um, within logistics, and I know your, your, some of your examples will be related to ports and shipping. Uh, tell us about a, you know some kind of business problem. What kind of business problems are we trying to solve in, in this space? So, as you know, from a port industry and a supply chain, what is very important is the cost and efficiency of delivering all the products that needs to come from point A to point B. So for that, one of the key attributes is uh, around the intelligent route optimization. 
we need to basically forecast and predict various learnings that you've had from previous delivery modes on how you can provide efficiency in that. And by gathering all that data together and using the AI models, we're able to create that platform and that visibility for an enhanced version of uh, customer satisfaction. Then we also have autonomous warehouse and yard operations, which are using a lot of robots and a lot of uh, automated systems, you know, for container sorting, stacking, and cargo movement across warehouses and port yards. So that's like uh, 24 by 7 monitoring, manless, automated operation for all your automated uh, warehouse operations. And the third thing is obviously um, it's, it's relevant for all the industries, this predictive maintenance, to be able to know, especially in ports and logistics, you know, it's a very high intensive uh, maintenance related industry. So if you're able to figure out what kind of problems you're actually facing much ahead in time, you don't have to spend that capex or operational cost later on to fix that problem. So predictive maintenance becomes a very important uh, AI related use case in the ports and logistics industry. Uh, there is obviously risk and uh, resilience. Contract management becomes a very imperative uh, topic in the logistic uh, with blockchain coming up. And obviously certain AI models support and uh, uh, that entire solution. And overall, I would say from a practical standpoint of view, you know, we have digital twins in port uh, operations. We have automated guiding vehicles in port uh, automation. We also have RTG cranes, which could have an autonomous operation. And all of this, what we're talking about uh, in AI would require two main key things. And we must not forget that. One is obviously enabling those GPUs with the AI power and you know giving that faster response because we're talking about certain computer vision related use cases for which X looks six real pride in. And this is one of the solutions that we built for one of the ports and we'll talk about it later. But more importantly, what we're trying to mitigate is the latency of the overall operation. We want to limit that how fast a camera is able to visualize something and how fast a machine is able to respond and take actions in accordance to that. So for that, in the telecom world, we have private 5G. And that private 5G adoption has been a key enabler for a lot of ports and logistics and even airports for that particular because what private 5G does are three main key things. One, it brings enhanced throughputs. It brings in low latency, which is very critical with edge, com edge computing coming into play as well. And the third one is multitude of devices that you can connect with the private 5G. Network. All three are very, very critical when IoT number, plethora of IoT devices gets integrated into a port and logistic operations. It all stitches down really well where private 5G becomes a very important, along with edge computing, a very important um, element in this whole, whole picture of AI adoption and port efficiency. So, yeah, when you and I were talking about this podcast, one term you used which uh, really uh, uh, stuck to my mind was smart port. So tell us a little bit about what is a smart port how is it different than a conventional port? And then we can go into some specific use cases that XLoop has implemented. Yes, I mean, so with the global trade increasing, the port operations are exponentially increasing. So they are under a lot of pressure because of congestions, because of unpredictable delays, high operational costs, and obviously the rising customer expectations because they are privy to a previous uh, experience of faster deliveries. Now Amazon bringing it the next day or the same day. So there's a lot of pressure that the ports are actually taking. So now there are many segments all the way from the ship talking onto the ports, what route it's taking. How much time a ship is going to be offloaded depends upon a lot of key attributes and data. How the containers are managed when they are offloaded and from the port operation, how they are brought up to the last mile operator and from there onwards to the last mile operation. So all of this operation clubbed together becomes a smart port. It cannot be just a single segment. So, I mean, what we did was um, to come in to mitigate one of the key issues that are between two parties to figure out the damage on to each and every 
uh, container that we are uh, taking from the ship onto the container. So there are two parties involved over here. One, obviously, the, the ship logistic entity and then the port operator. And obviously, as you know, there are many cranes from Arcos to RTG cranes, handling of those containers. Uh, you know, this very easy way to say that those containers have been damaged by you or it was pre-damaged uh, by the shipping uh, entity. So what we did, we came in with our computer vision uh, product, which is called X Vision. And we were able to figure out where the damages have happened. How did the container look like before getting onto the port? and how it has been returned back to the back to the port with a lot of other attributes of figuring out what is the number of the particular uh, container you know because it reads all those uh, things like there are ANPR cameras for cars to figure out the number plate so we're able to take out a lot of key attributes from the container itself from the uh, offloading to you know the offloading and then putting it back onto the ship altogether so that is one of the key uh, use cases that we worked upon with one of our port clients. But now we're expanding further uh, computer vision related use cases with other entities and the similar. I also want to not touch on the talent aspect of this. Yeah. As you are accelerating X loop and you're trying to, you know, uh, come up with these nice and cool solutions, how difficult for you is the talent hunt for people who can write the right code and you know bring the right technology and then if someone who is watching this podcast who wants to upskill in this space uh what would be your advice to those uh, supply chain uh, uh, candidates so jameel ai has not only transformed and helped the industries that we are building solutions for it has also helped us as the entities who are making these platforms, writing those codes and the software industry on a whole. So we are also starting from and leveraging the AI advancements that has come into our field as well. Now, the fields that I would uh, really suggest uh, uh, people to upskill in is obviously going to be the data science aspects of things. OK, because what we are doing is, um, you know, a lot of data, a big data that we need to number crunch and bring the analytics out of it. So that's one digital twin um, in the ports operation is also a very very hot space computer vision um, as we have also quite a lot of focus within the organization this is also solving majority of your ai use cases and then i would say uh, project management so because why uh, you know these port operations get uh, automated it's all because of the sensors iot sensors deployment and how the sensors needs to be brought into life, not from a connectivity perspective on how it should be designed and deployed is a very key and a very niche field that needs to be adopted within the port operation. And then bringing all of them together, again, I reinforce without your private 5G and edge computing and the latency reduction, none of these use cases will be as efficient and it will not be a long-term journey. So for all the port operators, I believe private 5G and edge computing as a base has to be in the roadmap for adopting any automation in the port operation going forward. From Singapore to Rotterdam, they have all adopted the private 5G uh, related uh, initiatives and all port operators in particular have to uh, leverage this technological leap that we're taking with uh, 5G, private 5G and AI. Just want to touch a little bit on the digital twin because you mentioned that a couple of times and I've seen uh, with my own experience like you know this this is another term that has been around for a while now some companies have implemented it successfully others are struggling what are based on your vantage point like from where you see things what have been some of the struggles because the digital twin term has been around at least in supply chains context as long as the IOT has been around right um and i haven't i have seen some very good examples but i at the same time uh it was more like a promise that in my opinion did not really deliver at until, until so uh, you know at least until now but maybe that is going to change with how some of the ai technology and the llms are getting smarter what in your opinion has been the challenge with digital twin and where do you see this might change in the future 
So digital twin has two real key aspects uh, in totality. One is obviously the visualization layer that we see, which is around the 2D BIM model, the 3D BIM models. And we have these drones flying in to capture all that information. We could see all those containers coming in uh, off the ship, getting it onto the, uh, onto the port and stacking it up. But one of the key enablers to visualize that is the IoT sensors. That IoT sensors needs to be deployed. So adoption of this overall vision includes IoT sensor deployment, which could be thousands of thousands of sensors from every place, from one place to another. And then the second aspect that we are missing is the data layer, where a lot of these ontologies are created between data. And that is the key area where a lot of entities are struggling to correlate all of this together to bring the overall digital 12 vision as we all see it. So we've seen it in smart cities, we've seen it in way more industries and operations, those videos and visualization layers look great, but stitching all of it together require a key focus on the data layer and creating those ontologies. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I think uh, because this is a this is always an interesting topic. Whenever we are talking about like you know smart factories, we talked about smart ports, but in our manufacturing context, we talk keep talking about smart factories. And I have seen some examples where this has been very successfully implemented, and those are the factories where there's a lot of adoption of the IoT, the sensors, and all of that stuff, and then it's easier to create those digital digital twins and then really get business benefit out of those, right? Because at the end of the day. It's, uh, it's, it's ROI. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, Ihab, this was a super uh, helpful session. And I think uh, this, I know this is just scratching the surface on what a smart port is and how AI is becoming more and more of a, uh, of a useful technology. But I think this is the way people will learn in this space as well, right? Because uh, one of the other challenges AI brings with it is that uh, the way people used to learn in a formal university college uh, that learning model is almost out of the window now. I mean, still relevant in some cases in terms of fundamentals. But one thing I keep telling people is because I get a lot of questions, how can I learn more about AI in supply chain? And I tell them, watch podcasts like this, watch content, stay active on LinkedIn, uh, because that's the most, uh, that's the smartest way probably to learn because this technology is changing faster than we think. And therefore, just keep yourself updated with what's happening in the industry, how professionals like you are implementing certain solutions. So uh, I hope this is going to be a super helpful session for all the audience. Uh, thanks a lot for your time again. And then I think as you further make these ports smarter in the future with XLoop, we will invite you again for another business case. Thank you, Jameel. Thank you for your time. And this is a very interesting time that we all live in. We can really look and you know uh, hear and feel the AI enhancement that's coming within the technological space you know, with all these chat GPTs, LLM models and so on and so forth. So we can really touch and see the benefit that it is bringing forth. So it's interesting time for us. Uh, we need to catch up ourselves within six months because the technological advancements are exponentially happening every day and we have to re enable, reskill ourselves. But I think every leader, as I clearly mentioned before, has to take the leap of faith to move ahead in the adoption of AI because this is the future and this is the way to go.